Sandra, big tech censorship back in the spotlight today in the wake of the news that the White House is working with Facebook to remove speech on COVID that it deems to be inaccurate or unhelpful. Our next guest is introducing new legislation right after his appearance on our program. It would require the White House to publicly disclose those actions on a central website. Joining us now is Tennessee Senator Bill Hagerty in this Fox News exclusive. Senator, good to see you today. Your new legislation is called the Disclosed Government Censorship Act. What's the issue as you see it, and how would this legislation remedy it? John, I think the American public was shocked just as I was with the revelations that the White House is colluding with big tech to try to censor our speech trying to control the opinions of American people, trying to control what we say. A clear violation of our First Amendment rights. So what they're doing is trying to outsource this to Facebook and other big tech corporations. That's wholly un-American. The White House seems to have forgotten the fact that in this country, the American public controls the government. It's not the other way around. Are you concerned that the move to censor certain content on Facebook and other social media platforms could be motivated by politics as opposed to science? Well, it's a, it's, it's a great concern, and I think it damages America's trust in so many ways. If you look at the most recent news that's come out, uh, new science, so to speak, that calls for people to now wear masks, even though they're fully vaccinated. If you go back to what the White House published back in the spring, back in May of this year, they clearly published that if you've been fully vaccinated, you don't have to wear masks indoors or outdoors. I checked just before coming on. That's still posted. They haven't censored that, even though it's contradictory to what the White House is saying now. So there seems to be a political element to this. And when the White House says it's information that they deem inaccurate, information that they deem unhelpful, uh, I think it's extremely concerning. In an exchange with our Peter Ducey a couple of weeks ago, Press Secretary Jen Psaki over at the White House said, look, the White House isn't actually censoring the content, but we are flagging it to the social media providers. Listen to what she said. We don't take anything down. We don't block anything. Facebook and any private sector company makes decisions about what information should be on their platform. So the White House may not, Senator, be pushing the delete button itself per se. But if you tell an organization to do something based on your investigation and they go ahead and do it, at the very least, you're in the chain of command. I I think that's exactly right. They're making these big tech companies an extension of the federal government. Certainly the federal government is prohibited by the First Amendment from doing just what Jen Psaki is talking about. But to outsource this, to have it just one step away, uh, to quote flag it uh, and to influence it, I think is very, very concerning. I think that's at the heart of President Trump's case right now against big tech. Now, at the same time as you're introducing your legislation, Democrats are pushing for new legislation called the Health Misinformation Act, which would actually hold big tech accountable if they don't censor what they say is misinformation on the web. And you talk to people who are free speech advocates and they said, look, instead of censoring content on the web, there should be more content out there to contradict, if you will, what you believe is misinformation. So as opposed to actually you know, wielding the pen of censorship, you put more information out there so people are better informed. Where do you come down on that? Certainly, John. And if you think about the damage that's been done by the censorship of the discussion about the Wuhan lab, I mean, now we're a year and a half away from the outbreak of this pandemic. The Wuhan lab involvement was silenced. Our ability to step back and get to the bottom of this now has been severely hampered by the fact that there was very little information available. We couldn't understand and assess what was happening. Now we're trying to go back in arrears after samples have been destroyed, researchers have been silenced, you know, the wet markets have been obliterated. I think that that underscores more clearly than any that uh, this is a huge issue that we need to, to step up and address. We cannot allow these platforms to essentially be an extension of the federal government to do what's convenient for the federal government and again silence America's free speech. That Wuhan lab is a classic example of information evolving as you pointed out people were being censored last year for pointing to the lab as a potential source for COVID and now we see Jennifer Griffin's report just a couple of minutes ago on what the French have been saying about it now for six years. Senator Bill Hagerty of Tennessee thanks for joining us we look forward to you filing that legislation.